you smile. <laughs> For both of you, uh, what was the difference between this and a typical college game? Physicality. They were they were very physical, um, riding you off of screens, uh, running into screens. They were just physical with everything that they do. But it was fun. It was just harder. <laughs> very much harder because they're strong, they're athletic, they're fast too. And... Oh, Jesus. It was just it was just hard, very much harder. And, like, you couldn't really cheat off anyone because they all can shoot, they all can score. So that was that was pretty tough. Jack. Just talk about the total experience of actually playing Team USA here in the KFCM Center. That, that was awesome. Those were our role models and people that I looked up to uh, my whole life. So it was just awesome just stepping on the court and playing and competing against them, the best of the best. Jazz, obviously Angel was guarding you right off the start. Just what was that like? I know you got a bucket pretty early against her. Just what was that matchup like? It was great. I mean, I'm playing against a Hall of Famer. And Angel, she's a great player, but she's even a better person. And uh, she, when I made the layup, she was like, good good shot. I mean, I, right then I was like, okay, it's my chance. I got to go at Angel right here. And I just so happened to make it. And then I landed hard. And now, I, like, now I'm feeling it now. <laughs> so, but it was great, man. It's a great experience. I mean, it's a once-in-a-lifetime experience. Only six college teams got to do this. And we were one of them. So it's it's a blessing. And we can't take this moment. Uh, we couldn't take this moment for granted. We learned a lot this weekend, even watching them practice for two days straight. We had a game. We watched them practice. We saw everything they did. We still couldn't stop them. That's how good they are. Yeah. <laughs> if uh, both of you had to take one particular moment outside of playing today, uh, over the past couple days, as the your favorite moment of the weekend, uh, what would it be? Well, my favorite moment, I got two actually. Uh, the first one was just watching practice, watching how they communicate with each other and how they set the tone. Just watching Sue Bird as a point guard. She she's definitely a leader. And the Q&A, how honest they was with us and kind of told us a, a lot about the WNBA and playing overseas. Yeah, I would say my, my favorite moment was the the one-on-one sessions we got with them and the, and the question and answers uh, thing we did last night. And just picking their brains and um, taking valuable information that they gave us and just applying it. Jasmine, it's been almost two months since you lost a game. You've dominated uh, most of the season. What is a, a game like this? How do you put it in perspective? You know who you're up against, but it's you know the the score is is pretty lopsided. <laughs> I mean, we haven't lost a game in two months, uh, but in this game we just came to compete and came to play hard. Um, and no matter what the score is, we just wanted to play hard. No matter if it, if it was a win or was, and it came out to be a loss, but we just wanted to play hard and compete. And we know like. We'll learn from this game. It's a lot of teaching moments we can learn from this game. Like when shots not falling, we can see how we have b bad body language at times. And at times, and we know that this is going to happen sometime in March probably. Shots are not going to fall all the time, but we have to pick each other up and we have to learn from it and just keep playing defense and creating easy uh, opportunities for us to score. Dana, Angel was in here saying that she felt like, you know, you guys have young legs able to outrun them. There are a few times where you seem to, to get back when they thought they had a fast break and intercept the pass. Do you feel like just your overall speed and agility and how quickly you guys play helped at all? Yeah, I think that helped for a little, uh, not not too long. Uh, they, they adjusted pretty well to it. But um, I just tried to make reads, and they were, like, extremely long. So it was pretty hard to make that loopy pass. And Coach tell me all the time, stop with the loopy passes, and I got exposed with it today. With, with some of the shots that, that you all made later on, how much of that was a byproduct of adjusting to what they were kind of putting at you, you know, and like learning how to do the same thing differently because of who you're facing? I knew he was going to be. <laughs> um, well, I'll just say – I'm a lot shorter than most of them, so I had to get my shot off a lot quicker, and I think that definitely messed with my three-point shot. I couldn't really get many off because they were guarding me so tough. And then when I did come off that screen when they was on the area, the pull-up had to be really quick because Sylvia Fowles was waiting on me right there. Is that you kind of see that as a good thing going forward? Uh... Yes, because now I know I got film that I can watch uh, a lot of things that I can learn from and get better on, and that's kind of what, what I love about it, 
I could just learn from it. Danny, you had mentioned earlier that there's not many not many players on the team that you can sag off of or kind of play right. play weak on defensively. That type of defensive focus, how much do you feel like that's going to help you guys? I mean, you got Florida State this week and NC State still coming up. How much do you feel like knowing how focused you had to be here every moment, every possession will help you guys going forward? It helped us a lot with um, playing off the ball. I think that was my biggest struggle. Well, it still is my biggest struggle, and I'm working on it. Uh, just playing off the ball and knowing where your man is and being able to help inside out and getting out to shooters, being physical on screens. Mm. Usually I don't like to switch screens because it's usually a mismatch. So I like to ride the, the girl off, and they use the screens really good, so it was it was harder to do it tonight. Dana, you uh, just mentioned being a little bit uh... – uh, uh, vertically challenged compared to some of the other players on the court, but I was talking to Debbie Ancinelli before the game, and she said, "Look at Sue Bird; she's five foot nine. You know, she's playing for gold medals. Do you think you kind of represent an example as, of that as well? As you don't have to have that height." Oh yeah, for sure. Um, I wasn't scared or anything. It was just uh, they challenged my shots a lot more. But I just know now where I'm getting my shots from and being able to just get in the gym and work on them. For either one of you who want to answer this one, what was it like? You're used to big crowds here. You're used to a love affair with your crowd, and you had to share it tonight. What was that like? Well, we knew it. We got it. it we said it before the game even started, like a couple of days ago. We was like, this is um, Angel in USA basketball crowd. Like, we knew every time Angel scored, the crowd was going to go crazy. If we stole the ball from Angel, the crowd was going to go, ah. Oh. So we just we just knew it. Like, we just knew every time Angel touched the ball or something, the crowd was going to go wild. And we just – we, but our fans are – they they show their loyalty. Like, even though Angel has moved on and went to the WNBA, played in uh, Olympics, they still show the love and support for her, like, if she was still here today. And that's a credit to our fans. They, they're they're awesome, and they, they are very loyal. Do either of you wonder how Oregon beat this team since you – Beat Oregon. Yeah, I, I honestly do wonder. <laughs> they they are really talented and well real rounded. Like it's no no weakness on the team. Thanks, y'all.